person who has to decide everything anew every day, that has to make choices in every situation, that person's exhausted and lost and will eventually burn out. I've written now 12 books about Stoic philosophy. I've been lucky enough to talk about it to everyone from the NBA to the NFL, special forces, sitting US senators, about how you operate in the world, how you get the best from yourself. The great General Mattis, very influenced by Stoic philosophy, says, figure out your flat ass rules and stick to them. I'm talking about rules for life. What do you live by? What are your standards? And, and really that's what Stoicism has been for thousands of years. And so here are 25 flat ass rules that you should follow every single day and will make you better at whatever it is that you do. Epictetus says that every situation has two handles. And that's where this rule actually adapted from Thomas Jefferson comes from. He says, always grab the smooth handle. Epictetus says one of the handles will hold weight, the other won't. What handle are you gonna grab in this situation? The one that empowers you or disempowers you? The one that makes you angry or gives you something to focus on and change, right? So every situation has two handles. Which one are you gonna grab? Grab the one that makes you better, that gives you something to do, that, that, that challenges you. Ignore the other handle. Seneca says every person is an opportunity for kindness and that's the rule here. Every situation is an opportunity for kindness. Kindness is the key. It's what moves us forward. Never pass up an opportunity to be kind, to care, to be compassionate, to listen, to appreciate what someone is going through because that's the truth. Everyone is going through something. This comes to us from Epictetus. He says, it's the chief task of life, which is focus on what you control. Is it up to me? Is it not up to me? If it is up to you, it gets 100%. If it's not up to me, it gets 0%. We focus on what we control because that's where our energy, effort, and emotions actually make a difference. The next one is related to the first one, which is we control how we respond to things. As Epictetus says, we don't control what happens, but we control how we respond to what happens. So by ignoring all the things that are not up to us, by refraining from regret or complaint or blame and focusing on this happened, what am I going to do about it? This is how we move forward. And this is what all great leaders, artists, human beings do. They focus on what they control and what they control is how they respond to what happens in life. The next is a question from Marcus Aurelius. He says, ask yourself in every moment, is this essential? Because the truth is most of what we do, most of what we spend time on, most of the things that other people do and spend time on are not essential. And he says, when you eliminate what's inessential, you get the double benefit of doing the essential things better. Do I need to do it? Yes or no. And if I do need to do it, then because it is essential, I'm going to give it everything I have. Are you meditating on your mortality? I carry a coin in my pocket that says memento mori. You could leave life right now. Marcus really says life is short. Don't waste time. Don't focus on things that don't matter. Going through our life with a clear sense of our mortality is essential. You have to say no a lot. This goes back to Mark Surrealis. Is this essential? If it's not essential, what do you do? This is the rule. You say no. You have to say no. When I talk to NFL teams, this is something we, we talk about. I say, look, everything you say yes to means you're saying no to something else. And whatever you say no to gives you more room, more time to say yes to what matters. In their case, being great at what they do. So what are you gonna say no to this year so you can say yes to the things that matter? to the people that matter in your life as well. You can't be afraid to ask for help. I don't want you to think that the Stoics are invulnerable, that they're, they never show weakness. In fact, Marx really says, you're like a soldier storming a wall. If you have to reach up and, and have a, a comrade help you up, so what? I love this, so what? So don't be afraid to ask for help. I love the book, The Boy, The Fox, The Horse and the Mole uh, by Charlie Maxey, who I had on the Daily Stoic podcast. And he's, he has a great line in that book. He says, asking for help isn't giving up. It's actually refusing to give up. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Dare greatly, as Brene Brown says, be vulnerable, ask for help. What is the path to wisdom? 
Seneca says it's finding one thing every day, one quote, one story, one conversation, one book, one insight. That's the idea. You get better one thing at a time. That's actually why we do the Daily Stoic email, right? Every single day we send out a free email inspired by Stoicism to the largest community of Stoics ever in the world. Almost 400,000 people get this email. You can sign up at dailystoic.com email. But the point is, you got to find something that delivers value for you every day. You got to seek it out. One thing that makes you better every day. That's the path to wisdom. We're not in this alone. To do harm to another person, to allow harm to come to another person is to allow harm to come to yourself. So Marcus Aurelius says in this rule, what's bad for the hive is bad for the bee. The way I think about this is whatever I do say, however I live, I go, what would the world look like if everyone did this, right? And if the answer is things would fall apart, things would be bad, then it's something I try not to do, right? What's bad for others is bad for me. What's good for me should be good for others. We talked about being tolerant with others, strict with yourself. That means not judging. Seneca says the study of philosophy is about scrubbing off your flaws, not other people's, right? Leave other people to their own mistakes. Don't judge them, especially people you don't know, especially people who are going through things that you don't know about. Seneca is right. Focus on yourself. Be strict with yourself. Don't judge other people. Leave them to their own struggle. You have to study the lives of the greats. Seneca says, choose yourself a Cato. Focus on someone who's going to make you better. As I say in my book, The Lives of the Stoics, we study the lives of the people who went before us so we can learn easily what they learned with great difficulty so we can pick up where they left off so we don't have to learn by trial and error. Find some heroes, study them, learn from them, learn what to do, what not to do. That's the journey I'm on with Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus. It's what I write about in Lives of the Stoics. But the idea is, Whose lives are you studying and what are you learning from them? Forgive, forgive, forgive. That's this rule. I heard a great expression that forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. Marx really says the best revenge is not to be like that. I would add to that is also to not hang on to whatever that was. You got to let go. You got to forgive. Yes, Marx really says that, you know, if someone's cheating in the ring with you when you're boxing. You got to you got to act accordingly but you can't hold on to grudges because they make you miserable. Value time more than money and possessions, right? You can earn more money, you can get more land, you can get more opportunities. What you can't get is this moment back. Seneca says the time that passes belongs to death. So don't think of death as something in the future. Think of death as something that's happening right now. And everything you do, even watching this video, you are choosing to purchase with your life. You have to remember you're a product of your habits. Epictetus says, if you want to be beautiful, make beautiful choices. If you want to be excellent, make excellent choices and make them habitually. Day in and day out, they add up. It's easy to get upset by things, which is why the Stoics say that we have the power to have no opinion. You can just think nothing about something. If you didn't know it existed, you wouldn't have an opinion. Now that you know it exists, great. But you don't have to say it's positive, it's negative. You don't have to say it's anything. It just is. Seeing things objectively, withdrawing judgments from them is really important. As Epictetus says, it's not things that upset us, it's our opinion about things. We control our opinions. Well begun is half done, as they say. So own the morning. If you want to have a good day, have a good morning. If you want to have a good life, have a good day. So it all comes back to how you start the day, own the morning, it's a great passage of Marcus Aurelius where he's arguing with himself about getting up out of bed in the morning. And he says, look, were you meant to huddle under the covers and stay warm? He says, no, get to work, do what you got to do, do what you were put here on this earth to do and do it early. Seneca's rule was put the day up for review. Ask yourself, what could I have done better? Where did I fall short? Who do I want to be? Was I being that person? So every day the law is put your day up for review evaluate yourself, interrogate yourself. That's how you get better. Seneca says we suffer more in imagination than reality. And that gives us the next law, which is don't suffer imagined troubles. The stuff that you're worried about, it'll happen or it won't. Worrying doesn't affect it, right? So Seneca says, don't feel more than you have to deal with that when it comes. 
For now, focus on what's in front of you, focus on what you need to do. Don't add to your suffering by anticipating it, by suffering in advance. That's only adding cumulatively up to more suffering. You got to see the good in people. That's an important law. Yes, the Stoics were pragmatists. Yes, they were realistic. They were even a bit pessimistic. But Marcus Aurelius famously tried to get the most out of people. He tried to see the good in them. He knew, yes, there's a certain amount of bad people out there, but he always tried to find something good in everyone he was dealing with. If you don't do this, you're going to be miserable and unhappy. Marcus Aurelius didn't want to be emperor. So it's interesting that in meditations, he gives this rule to himself. He says, never be overheard complaining, not even to yourself. Complaints are for losers. Complaints solve nothing. Focus on what you're going to do. Focus on the good in a situation. Don't allow yourself to complain. Zeno gives us this rule, two ears, one mouth for a reason. Always listen more than you talk. There's always something you can do. We, we talked about this earlier, it's focus on the response. There's always something you can do, some way to move forward, some little bit of progress that you can make. Zeno says, well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. So start small, focus on the little thing you can do in this situation. Marcus Aurelius talks about envy, right? Theodore Roosevelt says that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparing yourself to other people is focusing on something you don't control. It never makes you feel good. It either makes you feel egotistical or makes you feel crappy. Only focus on what you do. Don't compare yourself to other people. Hold yourself to your own standards as Cato did that are higher than other people. So when you're succeeding, you focus on how much further you have to go. And when you're failing, you ask yourself, did I live up to my own standards? That's what matters. You can learn something from everyone. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, everyone I meet is better than me at something and in that I want to learn from them, right? So focus on what you can learn from every single person, even people you don't like, even people you don't respect, even people who suck. Focus on what you can learn because everyone is better than you at something. And even if they're not better than you at something, you can learn from them in the cautionary tale. So you can learn from everyone. We always want to be learning. That's where wisdom comes from. Every day now for five years, I have written an email about stoicism. It's been a wonderful experience sharing with all of you. And if you haven't signed up, I would love to have you join us. It's the largest community of stoics, not just in the world right now, but I think ever before in history. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash daily email. It's totally free. No spam, you can unsubscribe whenever you want, but I'd love to have you join us and I'd love for you to be on this journey with me.